Adobe have added support for quite a few new formats with the Creative Cloud version. For example, one of them is DNG files. Now, DNG files are the kind of files which are used by things like the Blackmagic 4K cinema cameras and pocket cameras. Very nice format, which films in a raw mode and gives you a lot more scope to play with when you're grading. The best way to bring them in is through the source browser. So you go to the folder where the clips have been recorded and you can see you've got a clip in there and then you can just right click and import it. I've got one here on the timeline. Now one of the great things about these clips is that they are filmed in RAW and there's an awful lot that you can do with them in a grading program. They are made of basically uncompressed 4K images, so they're actually quite hard to play back. Mine are sitting on a regular hard drive and if I press the play button, it really, really struggles to play it back. You notice it managed it for a couple of seconds and then can't keep up, which is because the hard drives aren't fast enough. But the main thing about them is that you actually get a lot more information in them so it's possible to do a lot better grading with them. You get at that information in the effects control window. So I'm just gonna have the clip selected on the timeline, click on the effects window, and everything here you see is normal. But if I go to the master effects, you can see I've actually got some other settings in here. Now, to be honest, if I was to open this kind of file up in another program like DaVinci Resolve, I'll have a lot more options to fiddle with. Also, Premiere tends to put a look on it. If you look at it it's in Resolve, this clip is very, very flat, and if you click on the source settings in Resolve, there's a lot more options and a lot more things to fiddle with. Back in Premiere, Adobe seems to have put some kind of look on it in the first place to make it vaguely usable, and then the only control you've got here is over the temperature, the tint, and the exposure. So, see, I could change the exposure and make it lighter or darker and tint it a bit. So you get a lot more control, to be honest, if you go into another program. Also, I have to bring them in one at a time. So I've got a whole folder full of DNG files in here. Again, if you look at this in Resolve, you just click on the folder, it shows you all the clips. You can bring them all in at once. Look at this inside of Premiere, and you have to actually click on a particular folder and wait for the clip to pop up. So I have to bring them in one at a time. So it's not perfect the way they're bringing in DNG files, but on the other hand, it's nice that it actually does it, because most things don't. I did do a complete edit using DNG files. I just had a solid state hard drive to play them off. And it was just nice and easy to just whack them straight into Premiere and use them for an edit. Like I say, access to grading with Eclipse is more limited than it would be with a grading program. But so you get to it through the effects window, you click on the master effects, and then you fiddle here. You might notice that as I'm fiddling, I'm not seeing the results as I change the slider. I have to let go of the slider before the results update here in the program window. That's because these are effects on the source. So really, I need to see the source which is here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the effects window, grab hold of it, drag it, and then drop it. And if I drop it here in this little blue region, it's going to split this whole panel in two. And I'm going to have the effects controls here, and I can have the source clip there. So now I can see the source, the effects, and the program window. And if I adjust the exposure here, you'll notice that I'm seeing the results in the source as I do it but I don't see the effects in the program till I let go. If you're fiddling with master clip effects, make sure you can see the source so you can see the changes as you do them. But yeah, that's quite nice. It takes DNG files and you can get at some of the extra metadata to maybe get a better look out of it. It's the same with other formats. Here's a piece of red footage, which I just downloaded off the internet. Don't own a red camera. If you go to the master settings for that, you notice you've got an awful lot more stuff. All the stuff you'd expect to be able to do with red footage, but there's an awful lot more of it. So again, nice thing they've just added more format support and access to a lot of the extra metadata and fiddling that you get with those kind of clips.